All right, y'all know I had to do this one. And this is almost not even arguably the most famous type of waifu in fiction, the Catwoman. Everyone from the ancient Egyptians to the sad, fat old cat lady, who's probably gonna die alone, loves cats. And I mean, what's not to love? Look at this face. This is a face that can smack your mom and take your fried chicken, and you still think it's cute. This is a face that look you directly in the eyes with the cutest little cheeks, and be like, You have failed me, Inquisitor. Yeah, bitch. Oh. You didn't think I had the Emmy, did you? Next time I see that football baby fool. Not empty, not halfway full, but full. Now get in that kitchen, make me a sandwich. I need some tuna to refill my energy after the ass with one. A cat would seriously do that, and everybody in the room would be like, Oh. I will kill you in your sleep. Now imagine all that cute privilege mixed with the hottest woman you've ever seen. With well, sometimes added cat ears and tail, you didn't have the cat woman. And for most, the cat woman can do no wrong. You can look into anime, movies, and even comments, you will find the cat woman. And if you look even deeper in anime, a lot of the characters you know and love resemble cats, simply because cute is popular and it draws people in. Now for most of you out there, there is nothing I could tell you as far as a con that would make you not want to smash a cat woman. I mean, they're cute, they're hot, they're flexible. They can literally do no wrong. Even I thought they were perfect at one point, until I noticed it. And once you notice some of these cons I'm about to tell you, they may ruin your view of Catwoman forever. But first, where does the idea of the Catwoman even come from and how long has it been around? To find this out, I had to look no further than the Egyptian time period. Now the ancient Egyptians began domesticating the African wildcats as early as 4,000 years ago. Cats of all types were seen as magical, divine, and even godlike. But why is this? After searching further, I realized they literally had a cat woman as a goddess named Bastet. And to be honest, I don't even think she was the only Egyptian goddess that was depicted as a cat woman. But now she wasn't a cat woman in the modern sense of the word. In some depictions of her, she had a full cat head with a female body. And in other depictions, she just looked like a cat. And it seemed like she was a goddess of protection, pleasure, and a bringer of good health. Now, Bastet was very popular in Egyptian culture, only second to the goddess Isis. Now, if anything, this proves that the idea of Catwoman had been around for a long period of time. They just couldn't animate it, unlike the Japanese. The Japanese invented the more modern idea of cat girls, aka the Neko Mimi. In 1924, a Japanese manga was made that featured cat girls that was called The King's Tale. And in 1949, an anime was made of it. Now, this anime is so old, it was basically in black and white. I couldn't find any videos of it, but I could find some images. And yes, there's plenty of cat girls in this anime. Now I had to dig deeper to find out more about these cat girls. And believe it or not, the Japanese cat girls seem to come from the idea of a kimono, aka the Japanese equivalent of a western furry. However, these furs were seen as beast and yokai. And they weren't all cat girls. Some of them could have been fox girls, or really any type of human depicted with animal ears, paws, or tails. Now in Japanese folklore, all cat girls, kimono, or neko were not good. There was a myth associated with the Bakken Neko, or in English words, the cat monster. The Bakken Neko was a long-tailed cat, and because of its long tail, it could walk on two legs, and it even had powers like metamorphism and the resurrection of the dead. Now, every cat was not a Bakken Neko. It was believed that the older the cat was, the more likely it could turn to a Bakken Neko. So the cat had to be at least 13 years old, weigh more than 3.5 kilograms, and have an anomaly long tail. Now, in one of the stories of the Japanese folklore, when a widow told of her sorrow to a cat, it turned to a Bakken Neko. It then went to go kill two women in the household, and was later able to shapeshift into the form of these two women. It also cast a curse upon the entire family. Now, the only reason a cat would do this is because usually it was abused by its former <laughs> owner, causing it to want to take revenge. Can't really say I blame the cat. It should have had that food bowl full. Now, as far as the main point in this video goes, why is all this important? I truly question the fact if you can't understand something completely, how can you like it? Or better yet, even love it? For a man to smash any woman, even for a moment, he has to let his guard down. And this particular woman that we're talking about has claws that can be very unpredictable. But again, there's very little I can say to make you not want to smash a cat woman. Even in Japanese and Egyptian culture, they're mostly praised for a multitude of reasons. So is it wise to smash a cat woman? More than likely, yes. But can you still say yes after you see this image? Oh! Every time a cat girl has her hair covering her main ears, it's left me wondering if she has two sets of ears or just one. Because why is it drawn like that? I always thought if you were going to draw this, you would have the cat ears in the place of where the human ears should be. Not directly on top of the head, but more like to the side of the head. It just makes a lot more sense visually. Now believe it or not, some of your favorite anime cat girls have their ears on top of their head instead of to the side. And they usually have very long hair covering where their ears should be. Now this can't be safe for characters like Yorichi and Selena Kyle. We all know Selena, or aka Catwoman from DC, doesn't really have cat ears. But she is on this list because you know you will smash and she is basically a cat woman. I think her origin has changed a lot though, which has made her more of a cat thief than a cat woman, but either way, still smashable. Now we all know Yorichi can turn to a talking black cat with a deep voice. And she does have a form in a thousand year blood war arc where she has cat ears and a black tail. She also seems to be quite berserk in this form, but God is she bad. 
But my main point for her is, her ears can appear and disappear. But let's be honest, we all love Yoloishi in any form she's in. And I feel like I keep butchering her name. I'm sorry if I am, but it's not like it's your average name. And as far as what I know about these two characters, they have to be at least the most smashable on my list as far as cat girls go. There's literally nothing but pros when it comes to them. But then again, Selena Kyle does have Batman, and he will put Burley in the hospital. But even if I get beat up by Batman, I can still picture myself waking up in the hospital five years later after I get out of a coma, just being like, worth it. Hell, after I get out of the hospital and get on some pain pills, I'll do it again. I may have to introduce Batman to the Glock, because I ain't stopping. He may be able to put me in a coma, but I got two bullets that can cripple him for life. I ain't stopping. And then got Yorichi's fine ass. Oh, God. This has to be my number one waifu over Miriko. She a black queen, so you know you can't turn her down. And yes, I know she may not be black, but seriously, who cares? She be black, green, blue, white, gray, Mexican. I did not give a damn. The point is she bad, and that ass is fat. And that's all me and these nuts need to know. Now moving away from the more perfect oh Catwoman, to find cons, I had to search for the worst Catwoman in fiction. And my God, I honestly wish I didn't look this up because my brother, what is that? She even has the first con I mentioned, the cat ears on top of the head. And what could the hair be hiding, more ugliness? Seriously, this has to be the ugliest cat girl in fiction. But now she does come from the anime Gintama, which is basically a comedy. I mean, so I can see how her looks would play into that. Now, unfortunately, she didn't give me any more cons, and I figured if I couldn't figure out any more cons from this ugly character, I probably won't get any from the other cat girls in anime either. But then, I started looking through DC Comics again, and I remember Wonder Woman had an enemy named Cheetah. Now, Cheetah's backstory, not important. It's changed multiple times, and honestly, so has her look over the years. But is she smashable? I'm pretty sure Batman thinks so. Too much curiosity can be dangerous. Maybe I like danger. Do you? Try me. You can't even blame, bro. We all know you has a type. This scene was legendary back in the day. Girl got caught in 4K and was still trying to lie. Batman was locked up at the time, so it is evidence that she kissed him. Now, for this type of Catwoman, you could say fur could be a con. But for me, the overall look is a con in general. But I do like how her ears are more to the side of her head. It just looks more realistic in comparison to some of the anime girl characters. But now, I say the overall look is a con because in reality, it will look more like this. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? Or, even worse, like this. My eye! I'm not even gonna show that image again, because when I heard there was an old movie called Cats with cat people in it, and I looked it up, I was not expecting this. I was not expecting this at all. This, this is a sickness. This is an abomination. For God's sakes, America, just leave the cat girls to the Japanese, please. I'm sorry, but you have to be a straight up furry to say that's not a con. And if you are, okay, good. It's all yours. You will have no competition. Now, if anything, this proves that not all cat women are created equal. Most cat women depicted by the Japanese are either cute or very, very hot. Unless they're Catherine. But most in the US are depicted either like Catwoman or like Black Cat or like Cheetah or Tigra. And Tigra is just another superhero from Marvel. And let's be honest here, we all want the first two a lot more. Now, there are other cons that are more obvious, but it depends on the specific cat woman's personality. Or in other words, this may not be all cat women. And this kind of relates to all real cats in general. The cat woman may be lazy and may not want to take a bath or use the toilet. It's also very possible after you smash once, she may become too attached to you. And yes, that sounds like a pro until you get near any other Catwoman, or any woman in general. The Catwoman won't search your phone, all she has to do is smell you, and you're cooked. If the Catwoman has a personality of the normal cat, she may not forgive you for days for even being around other women. Even if you weren't cheating, that doesn't matter to her, she wants all your attention. Because to her, she owns you. Okay, that last con may not be the worst con in the world, but she still stinks. So I suppose if you can get her in the bath or make her use the toilet, you win. But yeah, good luck with that. A normal cat will scratch the hell out of you for trying to put in the shower. And the Nico, or the Catwoman, according to Japanese folklore, do have supernatural powers. So uh, yeah, like I said, you're cooked. You would get comfortable with the smell of crap or get scratched to death. The choice is yours. Living with a cat woman would probably be like living with power from Chainsaw Man. If you watch that anime, you know. Even Denji of all people found her disgusting. And Denji is down bad. I mean, bro's almost the most down bad character in fiction, and he still thought she was nasty. Yeah, power may not be a cat girl, but she does act like a cat, like a little too much. But now the great thing about a cat woman is they have just as much pros as they do cons. If they're anything like the Egyptian goddess Bastet, they can be very protective. And if we're going off Japanese folklore, they can bring you good luck. And I did mention this before in the video, but the goddess Bastet is a goddess of pleasure, so uh, interpret that any way you like. But that's definitely a pro for all cat women. So again, with all the cons and pros that I've mentioned in this video, 
is it still wise to smash a cat woman? And if, I'm being completely honest, no matter what type, just one time, you may have to dive in. The worst thing that could happen is that she curses you or tries to kill you. And the best thing that could happen is that the poom poom brings you good luck. Now which wife do y'all think I should do next? Cause I have a lot in mind.